Zdravo guys, good morning from Kumanovo, a city in the northern part, kind of close to the Serbian border of Macedonia. I'm here, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I've already bought a very large cotton candy from a Roma family who speaks German. This is a very, very strange place and I cannot wait to see what we discover. Come along. I could not tell you guys the last time I actually had cotton candy. Uh, he made it fresh. It was a very, uh, very interesting street food find. I don't think I've seen cotton candy anywhere outside of a fair in forever. So how does Macedonian cotton candy taste? Let's see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a cotton candy. Mmm. Delicious. So while I walk through the mean streets of Kumanovo eating my cotton candy, Oh, yeah. I wanna tell you a little bit about why this region, and particularly why Macedonia in general, is such a confusing and like beautifully mixed country. So the owners of the cotton candy stall were Roma, meaning they were from the gypsy community. There's a big kind of like ethnic split up in this city. Apparently it's 25% Albanian, something like 60% Macedonian. And then you have kind of the outlier communities. The gypsies are here, the Vlachs, which are kind of the uh, the peoples kind of who migrated here from the uh, Romanian area, as well as some Turks who still live in the city from the uh, from the Ottoman occupation of this region. Super varied. These are very multi-ethnic, multilingual people, and there's always so much to see here. It's always it's very confusing what you're going to find. You never know what you're going to get. Having been in Macedonia for about two weeks now, I've been learning a lot about how diverse and how how kind of jumbled up this country is. Um, Macedonia, for whatever reason, is kind of at the crossroads of a lot of political divisions as well as linguistic divisions in the Balkans. So to the south, you have Greece. To the east, you have the Bulgarians. To the north, you have the Serbians. To the west, you have the Albanians. So that leaves Macedonia kind of in a, in a strange way, specifically with the movement of peoples, you know, before there was lines, uh, so you have lots of different things going on in this country, a lot of different influences, a lot of different religions. But one thing that impresses me the most is the script. So in just like a, just a really typical little neighborhood here, what you can see, so here we have Mishtore or Mesarnica. So you can see the top is the Albanian word. The bottom one, I believe, is the version of it, but written in the non-Cyrillic um, that they get from Macedonian. but. Then, over here, just across the street, you get this Osteopro Ambulanta written in Cyrillic. So basically all the people here have to be able to read both scripts. Um, many people in the southern part of Macedonia also read the Greek script. So that's three scripts and then Bulgarian Cyrillic is a bit different, I believe, than Macedonian Cyrillic, which is different than Serbian Cyrillic. There's different letters, so it's like a totally mixed place. So this is only, for example, 25% Albanian, but this part feels very Albanian. And uh, here we have an Albanian flag flying. Uh, so the nationalism in this part of the world is so intense and so very, you know, divisive I think is the best point so I mean we're in the center you know not oftentimes you're you in the center of a of a city you know in a certain country and people in the majority of part of a city are just flying the uh, the a different flag or a flag of a neighboring border country who you've had wars with for you know millennia very strange along with the varied history and the varied uh, peoples you have here you also get like varied everything so the architecture so here you can see a house the people are still living in from like I don't know, I mean, there is, it's made out of wood and old brick, but like right here is a modern house that was probably built like, I don't know, less than 10 years ago for sure. And then here you can see kind of they're kind of building, rebuilding, maybe that one's unoccupied. They get lots of earthquakes in this area, so uh, oftentimes they build things, um, and if it's not built well, it falls down. Um, in the 60s, actually in Skopje, there was a massive earthquake that knocked down a bunch of the city. Almost 80% of the old city was completely destroyed apparently so 
Uh, unfortunately, that kind of is a lasting effect of life in the Balkans. It's very tumultuous with, you know, literal things, with figurative things, and with life in general. But they are always building, they're always repairing. This is another perfect example of the strip situation. So you gotta be able to read both, but if you can't, they will put it both for you but also it depends on the neighborhood you're in. Sometimes they only use the Albanian one. Uh, sometimes they only use the uh, Serbian, Macedonian, Bulgarian one. So you're kind of, kind of got to read both. And I have to say for you Americans who travel to this part of the world, learning Cyrillic is not that hard. This is kind of a cool little neighborhood I found here. So you have this kind of older neighborhood. You can see a lot of the older houses you can see here. You've got these old school, they called these the 600 tile roof homes uh, that kind of were famed during the Ottoman Empire. And uh, here you can see, but they're all kind of fallen apart uh, as Macedonia and all the other countries in the region slowly, you know, get a little bit more stable and get more money coming in. Um, you can see lots of uh, building and construction happening. So the question is, you know, especially with these uh, 70s, 80s block houses, what's gonna happen to these older homes? Are they gonna favor more modern kinds of things? Or are they gonna kind of like keep these traditional things, try to fix them up? Only time will tell, really hard to say, but beautiful views. I never really thought about it before, but in a way I kind of sometimes, not glorify, but sort of appreciate the Ottomanization of this area, but I realized reading some stuff about Macedonia, um, and specifically about the Balkans, that these were colonizers um, in the same way that the British colonized India, in the same way that the Spanish colonized South America. So these relics, you know, people still use them. There's obviously Muslims here, and it's a, it's a consequence of the colonization of this region. But um, I can understand how to some, uh, the presence of Turkic style mosques uh, could be seen as a negative thing. And the fact that people still use them uh, might be seen, might be further parts of the division of the society. Um, beautiful, definitely beautiful. This one is a, a called the Eski Mosque or the Pasha Mosque, and it's the oldest mosque in the in the city. Uh, it was built sometime, I think, I believe in the 1600s. Um, but I kind of get it. I kind of get why there's so much confusion of this region. For me, why I think Macedonia is so fascinating is that there are Macedonian people, and they have a nice strong identity. They have a strong nationalism. It's just for the longest time, they were not really able to have their own country or really have this unified ethnic group, this kind of like solidarity over their land. The Macedonians uh, are some, some say to be the, the first South Slavic speakers. Some people call them South Slavs in the kind of Bulgarian Serbian family. The language is very similar to Bulgarian. Some say it's dialectical, some say it's a different language. All that being equal, they, they are very, steadfast in the fact that they are their own people and that they have their own language, which is totally fair. And I'm not gonna argue that at all. It's just that Macedonia compared to the other regions didn't really have any control over its land for a really, 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 really long time. The Bulgarians had an empire, a kingdom, the, the Serbs had a kingdom, the um, Albanians were kind of in a similar scenario to Macedonia, but there was not so much ethnic like division and people moving and going in the Albanian territory but it seems like this land always got kind of the short end of the stick. They always decided to split it up throughout history. While it was under the Ottoman Empire, different, regionals, different regional powers were controlling Macedonia, whether it was the Albanian kind of kingdoms, the Bulgarian kingdoms, the Serbian kingdoms. For whatever reason, they got kind of left out. And then in certain treaties, um, just basically after kind of the fall of the Ottoman Empire, they kind of got their first shot at becoming their own thing but then they ended up joining the kind of kingdom of the Yugoslavs, uh, becoming part of Yugoslavia. So the kind of like Macedonian state, we can call it the modern Macedonian state, is really like only 30 years old. And they've only had self-determination, a national identity, a flag, this whole thing, like that's been validated by the international community for a really short period of time. So there's still a lot of stuff I think they're trying to figure out. And I think this is why this is one of the most diverse and unique Balkan countries, uh, because they haven't had that sense of identity, that sense of, I think, recognition that the other ones have had. I always think when looking at the cities here in Macedonia of how much stuff these people who live here have seen and have been through, even if you were alive for a hundred years. The people of Macedonia have experienced colonization, 
uh, degradation, segregation, racism from various powers. They've experienced different, po Ooh, wow, I thought a pigeon was gonna hit me right in the face. They've experienced uh, kingdoms, they've experienced communism, they've experienced democracy, they've experienced dictatorships, they've experienced corruption, they've experienced so many of these varied isms and things that people theoretically could experience. And the fact that you see people, you know, here, enjoying the park, having a nice day, kind of like shows you how strong the Macedonian people are and uh, that people can overcome lots of adversity. It may not be easy. You may get a lot of broken buildings. You may get a lot of, you know, bad things along the way. But um, the thing is that people all mostly like the same thing. They like to eat. They like to be with family. They like to take time to relax, to enjoy, to work hard, to make money. And uh, that's something we can all appreciate as humans. And I think that's what's so special about this land. This city has this real faded glory about it. Now down this main road, you can see these kind of, these probably like early 1900s buildings, the style you can see of what you would really find in Budapest and Prague, very similar to Eastern European style. Um, but just like we find often in Belgrade, Serbia, a lot of these buildings, um, either because of earthquakes or because of just uh, owners gone missing or whatever, just lay in disrepair. They put a modern apartment building right next to it and uh, another one on the other side. But these two, who knows what will happen to these guys. Beautiful though. I would totally love to buy something like this, repair it, make it nice again. One of my favorite parts about this country as well is they have these old Yugoslav kiosks. This reminds me of what I've seen in, all over Eastern Europe, but they always painted them bright green colors or bright colors, pastels. Here they would have sold either food or something like uh, newspapers. Uh, and for whatever reason, they don't use it anymore, but they put up a modern, more modern one over here, but it's still here. And the, the idea was these were portable, so I believe they could pick these up and move them. But it reminds me of something out of like Fallout 3. Super cool. In front of me is a good example of a house that must have collapsed during an earthquake at some point over the last, you know, 50, 60 years. And for whatever reason, they just decided to leave it, you know. Everything else on this side of the street is really nice, repaired, painted even, uh, stuccoed, uh, but then they just have this house that's in ruins. So uh, it's hard when you don't have the infrastructure to take these houses apart or to do anything with it. And when the owner leaves, there's not much they can do. So I took a total swing in the dark. I came to this place, you know, I was trying to find something super local and I was curious like what kind of food they had. They said they don't have a menu. So I said, do you have local food? They said, yes, we have local food. He pulls up a picture of some sort of bean dish and that was my option. So I said, I will take one, sir. Um, so I have no idea what's gonna come out, but I'm very excited to taste some local Kumanova food. So our meal is here. Let's see what we got. We've got a cast iron pan full of beans. They look like white beans cooked down with a little bit of uh, parsley on top. We've got a roasted pepper. We've got some bread. We've got one piece of fried fish some lemon wedge, and all for $2.50. That is a pretty good deal for a lunch. So very curious to get in here. All right, so we've got some food here. I say we give it a shot. So uh, let's start with uh, the cast iron pan full of beans. Hmm. You know, it's like baked cannellini beans really hard to go wrong. Um, pretty good, I don't have much to say. They're kind of like, they're beans, delicious. Next up we have a, uh, a big piece of fried fish. And the interesting thing is they fried it, they battered it, but they left the bones in. So let's, uh, ooh, we got some steam coming out. It's a nice white fish, let's give it a shot. Delicious, it's like fish and chips. I'm kind of a bit confused how this all goes together. Um, we can think of it as Macedonian fish and chips. Um, beans and fish, I don't think I've ever had as a combination in my whole life, like ever. Uh, but you know, when in Rome. Look at that, boom. You didn't know you were gonna get a combination like that in Kumanovo, Macedonia. Let's give it a shot, see how it all goes together. It wouldn't be my normal combination of things, but overall it is really tasty. Altogether it is 
I mean, it's like stick to your ribs, like pretty, pretty basic, but all like super tasty. Pretty damn good. Good job, Gostanitsa, Goma. So I'm not gonna lie, pretty strange combo. Maybe I was someone that needed some beans and fish for lunch. Maybe they thought this man needed a hyper traditional beans and fish lunch. Pretty good, nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. Just not what I was expecting, for sure. So I think that's gonna be it, guys, from the mean streets of Kumanova. If you liked the video, make sure to, of course, like and subscribe. Wow, no helmets on that bike. Make sure, of course, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, super helpful to me. I might be starting a podcast soon. If you're interested in that, comment below, thinking about it. And uh, we got lots more content coming from Macedonia, so stay tuned for more food, travel, and culture content from this very unique, very beautiful Balkan country. We will see you in the next one. Fala.